Hey Nick, how you I'm doing? Good. How are you? Not bad. What's going on, man? I'm all right. Sorry, I'm a minute late. But... Oh, it's all good. I, it worked out good. I was uh, finishing. I was in on another interview. I had to be like, oh shit, I'm sorry, I gotta leave. I end up talking a lot, so I was like, I think I have to be, like, <laughs> half of his questions because I'm a little long winded. So I'll try to keep it uh, more concise. So he that's all right. You can be as long long winded as you like. Less cool. me right means I don't have to do as much talking. That's okay. <laughs> <laughs> I did want to dive into your musical taste, like it personally growing up. Um, what's the, what's the first music that you remember as a kid? First thing I can remember is I could barely remember this, and I wonder if it's my brain just putting together the stories my parents told me and like creating that memory, which I know our memories are are pretty gluey. You know, our, our human memory, uh, when you when you study it nowadays, they're like, it's at least 50% made up. What <laughs> what you think you remember is half being created. Stevie I'm going to use that with my wife now. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, Stevie Nicks, uh, Stand Back. Uh, my mom said I would just, I just kind of remember just kind of rocking and having just big, big giant headphones on. And my mom said I would just like put that song on all the time and want to listen to it on the big headphones and just stand back, stand back in the middle of the... Then it was like Steve Winwood, you know? I remember my dad always playing Steve Winwood. Uh, and I love this shit now. I mean, like that's what I listen to probably more than almost anything is like that 80s contemporary, adult contemporary, like pop rock stuff. Phil Collins, um, Genesis... Um, and then, you know, my mom was a big Led Zeppelin fan, so she was almost, I think she was kind of into heavier stuff than my dad, but what, when I first started being like, okay, what do I want to listen to? Yeah. That was like eight, nine, 10 years old. And it was, it was right when like Nirvana was coming out, you know? And so the early nineties sort of grunge scene was really, really influential, but Guns N' Roses, um, Metallica, Pantera, uh, Chili Peppers, um, Primus, kind of like you know, MTV was really kind of informing our minds. Yeah. That's like that's where we got your information. So we would just watch MTV during the day as kids, and and it would be you know, My Name Is Mud and and uh, November Rain, and then fucking um, you know, Jar of Flies from Allison Chains. I remember renting from the library and never returning it. <laughs> the, yeah, the you know they, they're they about to re-release that for the anniversary with yeah. like actual flies in the cover. Oh, I didn't know they're going to be real flies. I saw, yeah. the I saw the box and I was like, oh, that is so cool. I think yeah. I should, that's like, I realized this actually. My drummer, uh, Greg Williams from, uh, from my first band, Ain't Matter, uh, he asked me, we're always like, you know, keeping each other in check as far as music and he's like who's your favorite band and he's one of those guys that's like you can't give me the oh i can't pick one you know and i was like if i had to pick one i guess i would say what band do i know the most songs of and know all the lyrics and can sing along and like i'll be like i guess probably it would be allison chains you know because i can i mean we go to i go to an allison chains concert and like i can i sing the whole fucking night I know, you know, I know it all. So I guess I would be like, whether or not something could be your favorite or this or that, I'm like, but that's kind of like the, the, you know, your words yeah. are one thing and your actions are another. It's like, I know all that shit. So I guess I would probably say Allison Chains is like my number one. So in that respect, 180 bucks or 200 bucks or whatever it was for that box set, I may actually pick that one up because I, that was such a, uh, like a, and uh, just a powerful record for me growing up. You know what I mean? I remember using it as a, like a milestone, you know, like I remember just Christmas Eve's, you know, both parents are working, you know, and like put that record on. And I remember, you know, it's like, it's just crazy how a piece of art like that, like a timeless piece of art can act as sort of like a, you change, but the record doesn't change. You know, so you, you measure your own growth against that record. I do that with like uh, Dark Side of the Moon too. Uh, right. I mean, a lot of Floyd, but specifically that one where I'm like, it's like a, a checkpoint 
you know, you go listen to it again and be like, where have I, how much have I changed since the last time I listened to this all the way through? And it's like, it's just kind of fun to use music as like a barometer, but only some music can do that. You know, if anybody ever asks me, what's my favorite guitar solo, I always choose nutshell, which they don't expect because, you know, they're expecting me to say like some kind of Steve Vai shit. Of course. But nutshell, it's so perfect, that guitar solo. And it's understated, but you can just tell that he's such a great guitar player from that. And that one little run. And that that's like a, such a great answer too, because a, a, a great solo, a great piece of music at all, really should be measured in its ability for how well it conveys an emotion, how well it makes you feel something. And I think that's why we play music in the first place and definitely why we listen to it. And listening to that solo, I've, I've thought many times the same thing that I'm like, is there a solo that has more feeling, raw feeling in it? And yes, there's talent in it too, but it's not the whole way through. He's got that yeah. one little part. Yeah. Just so good, man. Yeah. That's I Cantrell is one of the most underrated writers, singers, guitar players. Um, I just fucking love that. I'm, I'm, I think I'm going to buy that box set, dude. <laughs> There you go. I've inspired you. <laughs> and there's real so, in it. <laughs> so you guys, um, in some ways, are like the you know the epitome of that kind of MySpace genre coming coming up. What bands have you been seeing coming out recently? You've been excited about? Um, let's see. Well, there are. Okay, so my buddy's got a band. My buddy Wes How has a band called Alluvial. A-L-A. Yeah, no, no. Yes. Okay. So I just saw them the other night and like, man, I th- am so stoked on that. I think they're, he's really onto something fresh. He's one of the greatest guitar players, uh, highly underrated, but he's pretty well celebrated these days too. Um, but just his riffs are just, ugh. there's something just gross and awesome. And, and, and like, a uh, kind of like a, in the vein of the Vogue decapitated, which I think a lot of influence came from Dimebag type of thing where he's got that sauce, the whammy sauce, but just super, super tasty. So Alluvial is really great. Um, there's a band I love called um, Soften the Glare, uh, which is uh, uh-huh. my my bass influence uh, and good friend now, Ryan Martini, um, him and Bon Lazaga and a guy named Mitch Hull. And it's real tough to put your finger on what it is. I mean, I guess you could just say it's fusion, um, but it's got obviously the Ryan Martini, like super present uh, bass uh, lines in it. And then they'll just add in a, they have this person called Linda Angel that comes in and just adds all this other stuff. Very cinematic, but very dynamic. Um, And so that's, they're relatively new. I mean, I think it's, you know, four or five, six ish years or something since they dropped their first record. Nuclear Power Trio is pretty cool. Oh, this band called uh, The Omnific. Wow, no. Yeah, no, they're no. from uh, Australia. And it was like my first band ever, Ain Matter, that I've, I've told you about a couple times. Two basses, drums, and vocals. No regular guitars. Um, and we had such a fun time doing that, you know, like showing that bass can be literally as sonically diverse as a band that would, would have guitars or, or other instruments. Um, so this band Omnific is from, uh, from Australia. It's two basses and drums and it's just super cool. How, what they, how well they're able to fill out, um, the sonic range, um, and showcase what the bass can do as an instrument. Killer, killer players too. Super good. Cool. I'm going to check them out. And can you name an album that is completely different to the music that you make that you absolutely love? Yes. Um, Every Day by Cinematic Orchestra. Um, That's funny you mentioned that because last night I saw a guy called Patrick Watson okay. in concert. And he sings on To, um, to Leave a Home, is it? Oh, yeah. By Second. Cinematic Orchestra. Yeah. Wow, that's Patrick Watson. I'm gonna Okay, I'll, uh, does he have other stuff then? Cause I love yeah, it. he has a ton of stuff. It's just absolutely beautiful stuff. You should check it out. Dude, I, that... If I could pick, like, if you could go through and, like, look at your your most played, you know, I guarantee you that Cinematic Orchestra is, like, by a long shot my most listened to record. It's just, like, the anti, the it's like the antithesis of, of all the brutal death metal, you know? Um, you know, we get our fill of that. I know some, a lot of artists will still, they love it. You know, Johnny still listens to tons of metal. Um, my Charn, the drummer from uh, Job for a Cowboy, tons of metal. 
Um, I do metal, but it's in it's in you know it's like when I'm off tour, I'll listen to metal. But I'm on tour, I, I listen to that stuff like that and like Zero Seven. Um, what's that record called? When the Fall, I think it is. Yeah, just, yeah. How about that? on Simple just, Things? Just so good, dude. I just love that kind of like. Um, I don't know. It's just it fits at eight. It fits at six in the morning when the sun's coming up. Yeah. It, fit, it fits in the afternoon. It fits at night. Like it's just I can listen to it whenever. It's just yeah. very soothing and soulful and and beautiful. You know. I think you'll like Patrick Watson. Okay. Cool. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I'm first a- time I saw Zero Seven, they had Sia and Jose Gonzalez actually on stage with them doing those songs. Oh, okay. Killer. Yeah. Uh, who's the other one? Then you you probably already know it. Then um, who do I listen to? Oh, um, Bonobo. Yeah, yeah. But the Bonobo, I, I like. The one I dig is uh, um, not. I like Black Sands is good, but uh, Migration, 2017. Yeah, beautiful. My, another great record, man. I love that. Song. Yeah. Okay, so I'm gonna put Patrick, Patrick Watson in. I got what? to see Bonobo here in Montreal with a full band as well. That was oh, pretty wow. special. Wow, I've never yeah. seen Bonobo. Never gotten to see Cinematic. Never gotten to see Zero Seven. I always miss it, so I'm gonna have to like yeah. catch that sometime. You know, sometime, sometime. Patrick Watson goes back quite a ways. Yeah, he's okay. got a lot of stuff. All right, I'm gonna grab the latest one and then the first one, and then we'll see how it goes. <laughs> this one called something for robots. See, love songs for robots. I would start with that. Okay, I'm gonna start with it. I downloaded it right now. Yeah, thank you for that. So, I love, I love that type of stuff. Ed, do you like FKJ? Yes, yes, excellent. Yeah, really, really cool. I really love cool. that type of music, man. I really, really <laughs> do. Ah, that's cool. So for anybody that doesn't know Job for a Cowboy, because there are still people out there, if you could pick one song for them to listen to first, what would you choose? I would say Son of Nihility. Second track off of um, Sun Eater. That would be the first intro that kind of like en- encompasses like everywhere the band has been and where the band is going too. Cause there's elements of that, like super moody part at the beginning, um, that we really want to kind of dive into more, you know, almost like kind of cult of Luna type B type of vibe. Like we really want to explore that, like the super moody side of things. Cause like the metal side's always going to come out. You know what I mean? Like yeah. that's why I, I like when bands experiment because like, I know, I know what job for a cowboy sounds like. I know what, you know, um, decapitated sounds like you like you once you found that core essence of your sound great you know but like explore because like you're never gonna not have your your core essence thing there you know so that's where that's what i would like so i I would say i would say that song would probably be a good a good starting point well as a big big cult of luna fan Ah. uh i definitely uh appreciate that and i look forward to the next job for a cowboy album to see if any of that infiltrates But uh, in the meantime, thank you very much for your time and good luck with everything that's coming. Awesome, man. It was a pleasure talking to you, dude. Thanks for the recommendations. And yeah, that, that, um, the piece that didn't make it onto the record that was going to, it was either going to start the record or we're going to use that as a, like kind of a segue in the middle of the record. Um, it's, it it was, it's very, it's not cult of Luna, but it was, it's just super moody, really reverbed out guitar that was almost like, Kind of like uh, it reminded me of something like Tosin Abasi would write, like his clean, real pretty stuff, um, right. and then mixed in with like twenty eight days later sounding uh, effects, and like I was just doing, I was just getting weird in there and just making all this cool, crazy stuff. So um, hopefully, hopefully that'll come to fruition, and we'll get to put a bunch of that on the next record. But thanks again for the talk, man. It was great. I 